I just remember feeling like this might be my last match and I'm okay with it. With I, love tip toe. I love that. I love that move. This moonsault? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, with these kitties that are like, we have technical NXT. <laughs> that everyone must have seen my bad, bad behavior. The retirement. You're going to legend me up? Like, it's not even fair. Vix Crow, in the ring, maybe. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Welcome, if you're into Ring the Bell, this is DS, and this is Foxy Holiday here at Ring the Bell. Foxy Holiday. We've got Alicia Fox, Vix Crow in the house. How are you? I'm good, DS. Thank you so much. I've literally, for years, was like, Alicia Fox interview is my dream interview. You are seriously, you're so funny. You're making me blush. I don't even know. I guess I'm like, stop. Why? I'm so happy to see you. Thank you so much. And you know, recently fans have learned that the chapter as Alicia Fox in WWE has ended and the era of Vix Crow has started. (laughs) Correct. So I thought this would be a really great opportunity for us to count down fan voted top five (laughs) moments of Alicia Fox to kind of recap that chapter. Let's do it. Yes. And and get ready for Vix Crow. Yes. All right, let's start from the first moment. Okay. It is. Are you ready for this? I know. He's like, yeah, I'm definitely ready. I can't I can't even imagine. It is it's for the Divas Championship. You versus Mickey James at Hell in a Cell 2009. I think I remember this finish more importantly than anything else. That finish? <laughs> Wait, let's talk about this finish. Oh, was, I didn't know I knew how to do that. Then. <laughs> okay, this is the iconic finish that everyone remembers. Alicia's in trouble. Yeah. I was like watching the match. I couldn't. I was like, am I supposed to be embarrassed at this point? Am I supposed Because you know what's so interesting is I, I can't remember like a good moment where I sat and reflected with my craft by mm-hmm. myself today, mm-hmm. watching it back, because I like, I'm grateful to have constructive criticism with my what? friend. No, yeah. no, people so, love this match. I know, I'm just. Trying to survive here. That finisher, the way you took that Miki DT, is like one of the most <laughs> iconic selling of all time. You're the queen You're of so selling. Funny. No, but literally, you are queen of selling. You do know that, right? That's so funny. Thank you. Well, you know what's so funny is with, as I was watching the match, like I think when I went to pick Mickey up in that finish, I was like, it was like we were both blown and I was nervous. And so I don't think the execution was solid at all yes so that's why i was like oh no that was a mess up that was a oopsie daisy this finish that's why i was like watching i'm like oh god the match i'm like oh i remember what it was it was the finish so that's funny because i were looking i was like oh no that's a big oopsie coming but then fans were like that is legendary the best selling of mickey (laughs) dt of all time (laughs) i had a good opponent i had a good opponent yeah Yeah. and that's the one thing to build art with these girls like it's kind of (laughs) crazy This is your first singles match in pay-per-view. I, yeah, I know. It's like yeah. I remember the gear. And you know what else? I When I um, first got hired in 2006, like I think I was like 116 pounds, but I had these big areas here, mm. like kind of big honker chonkers. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know. It was like a high school gift out, right? <laughs> no, I, I'm just kidding. I didn't purchase them. They just like naturally developed. Yeah, naturally developed, you know? And so it was just like, I got real top heavy, but I was always really just insecure. So like through graduation, through first year of college or, you know, and then on to WWE, I was always like, like hunching back and like slouching this. And so like, I remember, I think it's Sandra Gray who still is making my gear, you know? She made this. Oh, really? She makes, yes, she makes Trends gear okay, at Impact yeah. today. She's a big superstar <laughs> mama. But she made this gear and she gave me a lot of confidence when it came to, you know, because in this time, I think I'm like, no gym yet, no Gail Kim training yet. She's the one that first took me to the gym my oh first day. My yeah, God. yeah. She was like, oh no, we got to get some, this, some, you know, she loved the gym, especially when we were traveling together. Oh. So it was like a real, like, a little, like, kind of Rip Rogers called me olive oil all the time. So I was still like, just little, thip, thip, thip. but then Sandra was like, just try it, you know? And so, um, yeah, I owe Sandra a lot of um, credit for that. So a lot of people might not know that you've been through the whole system. You've been through OVW, FCW since you were like 19, right? 2006, I was 17. 17? Oh my God. Yeah, so that I think is what makes this current moment so parallel is because it was my 17th 
consecutive year. It's like I went when I was 17 and I made it 17 years. I was a child. Yeah. I was a kid. I guess I'm grateful because those two years symbolize a little bit of like acceptance for like who I and what I can do for like the industry of service later for one, which is still like a lesson in continual learning, right? But like I struggled with a lot of um, vulnerability very because it was, I think in a sense of like having that process of my life on camera for me like at first you know this is before reality before social media so like for me like there's parts of my way of reflecting on my maturity or my growth or my process in these match type segments yeah. that didn't really relate with my local friends. That's what I was like really struggling, you know? Mm -hmm. One thing that I do see in some of my matches is a tired girl, like kind of tired, you know, cause I started when I was 17. Right. So I wasn't like in the drinking age at the time, right. guys. Right, you know right, what I'm right, saying? Right, right. Like progressively, uh, I learned about it, but like, in reality, like I know how I am when it comes to like work and I don't realize I'm tired. It's difficult for me. Mm. So like they hired someone who yet didn't know themselves, okay. but still would have worked hard for anything, you yeah. know? So um, it's just really funny, interesting, yeah. yeah. This is Alicia Fox, she's our wedding planner. Yeah. You made your main roster debut as a wedding planner. I know, yeah, <laughs> yes, you're right. Being yes. in that kind of a salacious storyline, what was your thought when you were like first pitched with that? Well, it's funny because, you know, Vicky Guerrero mm -hmm. really did a sister good because <laughs> they, the office asked her, well, is there anyone that you would want to see, you know, from developmental, like come and be a part of your segment? And she chose my, she, she chose my character name. Oh. I don't remember if I were OVW or FCW. I must have just maybe got to FCW mm -hmm. or something. I'm not sure because developmental for me started before like going back and forth from the road, oh. DJ Gabriel, wedding planner, because I think right. that was second. Then I was back in developmental right, right, and then right, went right. back for Michelle McCool and mm -hmm. all that situation. Yeah. And then somewhere in between, I was like, almost gonna be in like the dance thing with like Brooke Adams and Barbie. Oh, and I can't really? Get, yeah. You were living in extreme expose, eh? Yeah, it was like, <laughs> I mean, I had like, or it was like two cold Scorpio was gonna be there and Brooke Adams, she's so beautiful, so great. <laughs> and we were at her house and we were making, or she was making up the routine because mm -hmm. I'm like just not in, I mean, I mean, was on a dance team, but I mean, I cannot brag or anything. I have no skills left going. There's one thing that I really vividly remember though from your early career was that there were praise coming from everywhere you were like kind of a super rookie You're so funny. No, like really? yeah like trish stratus was like praising oh, you nice. like tracy brooks from tna was Love praising tracy. you that she wanted to work with you i guess that was like new to me to know but oh, okay. man a lot of those women that like you know um i crossed paths with like yeah i had a lot of respect for like just knowing them knowing that maybe one day I could learn to work. You know, today, like I'm pretty, f I feel really confident that I could work with any of the girls, no. like any, any opponent, like out of just complete love for, cause we know we can do it. You know, yeah. we're just like, <laughs> Well, shall we move to the second moment? Let's, yeah, oh my God. The second moment is. And new WWE TV champion. You becoming the first and only oh African-American Divas Champion, defeating Gail Kim Marie's Eve Torres at Fatal 4A match. Mm, Frenchie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That oh, one God. was so cool. It was like, oh geez. Yikes, yikes, sorry Eve. <laughs> yikes, green. Constructively, I'm watching this, right? Cause oh, I get no. so- You're being so critical I, right I, now. I, like, I go like right to the zone, <laughs> I know. You're so <laughs> critical. So okay, this is a celebration okay. of Alicia Fox. This is a yeah, celebration. Right, right. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. It, I'm so happy to be here with okay. you and like do this. Yeah, absolutely. You're yeah. right. It's funny. Yeah, because like I don't think in my mind mm -hmm. I had any concept of what this um, was to the audience or to like the locker room. I was so scared. I was mm. so nervous. Like that. 
I was at that point so nervous I was gonna mess it up. Before this match? All the time. All the time, okay. This moment, you know, you being the first and only Black Divas champion, you got to connect with so many fans, especially like black girls watching you growing up, like Ariane Andrew, you know, yeah. Cameron talked about how she really connected with you growing up watching. At the time, there, there wasn't any representation of women of black women. You know, Amari Miller, she always talks about how you were the inspiration for her. You know, it's really empowering. Like, it's really empowering because I, I feel like I'm in finally a name that they can call me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. yeah. So I'm happy to um, celebrate it today. Now I feel like I'm celebrating. And then I didn't feel like, you know, what was going on? I mean, so so when this happened, a lot of fans were like, kind of surprised that you wanted to be a champion. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> That's what I was gonna ask, like, because you weren't like feuding with the champion or anything. Like, yeah. did you know that this was gonna happen yeah, in no, advance? No. no, I think it was like, like right now. Like, oh. I think it was like literally, <laughs> like what? Like, it was almost. Like, I don't know if the match is on here yet, but when I had another char character change, when I went and ripped up the arena and mm -hmm. stuff, it was like I looked up and was like. Right now? I think that's what the one thing too about wrestling is you're always chasing the high, like, because the card's subject to change, you right, know? Right. So you learned that day. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. I feel like it was maybe a week before, okay. or but maybe the day before. I feel like maybe it was like fit or aren't. I mean, if I bump into them going for it, like, I feel like <laughs> I'm going to have to ask them. I'm like, do you remember that Fatal Four Way? You were the champion and you backed it up in the ring. That. <laughs> So funny, Scott. <laughs> We're no. not even gonna talk about my uh, no. skills. <laughs> I want to talk about your beautiful finisher, X Kick. <laughs> you know what? It was Laryngitis. Wait, did I try it in this match? Because I, I think I only at this point only had like two moves I okay. could do. It was like the Northern Lights, right. the Tilt World Backbreaker, which I love. I like. I mean, but it's awesome because you know a lot of the girls can like really make me look like a star like yeah. trend you know right ah! you know and then there's like gail mm. you're solid you know and all the girls really have their own thing going on but that's definitely one thing i love to execute and then my northern lights so at that point the x kick i think was like neat i think he taught me that day <laughs> Title. <laughs> like, okay. I'm not even kidding. And I'm like, because it's kind of tricky with the switching of the t -t 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 little feet, you know? And then I, whoop. what an honor, Booker T, you know, to like mm -hmm. really establish the axe he can put it under his name, yeah. you know? So hopefully he can really help me execute it as well. Because I. She wants to come down and. Um, continue the saga and she just want to knock some of the rust off at reality wrestling you know i was always like trying to get there <laughs> Watch his Wendy Richter. let's talk about the northern light suplex though okay, the queen yeah. of northern light suplex <laughs> the best one in the industry with I the tiptoe i do love that move i like doing it it's fun <laughs> you know? yeah. it's easy as fun and all the girls are really nice and safe and always willing to take. They're yeah. always so kind, you know? Yeah, and the tippy toe, it just reminds, you know what? It reminds me of like Girl Scout years, cause mm. like. <laughs> but yeah, I always love doing back bends and back yeah. kickovers, yeah. So then the Northern Lights just kind of fit in their repertoire. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> There's a mystery move that everyone talks about though. This is a mystery that we're gonna solve right now. This moonsault that you did. At <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> this one USA Network promo. That was like a ring set up in like um, the arena because they were filming the commercial or mm -hmm. whatever. And I think it was just like a practice ring. And uh, I want to say like Fit was there and Ar I always say Fit and Arn were there, you know? <laughs> Fit and Arn were there, of course. I think I was just saying, hey, I really want to try a moonsault. Like, you know, oh. I just wanted to practice. And then Fit's always like, well, just go do for it, you know? Like he's always like, do it or like, and same with Arn Barry, just like, you can do it, just go jump it up and like, do it. And I think in the commercial, we were able to choose something we do good. <laughs> <laughs> so this was the first day you've ever yeah, practiced I it? ever did it. Like, that was it. <laughs> like, you've never done that it again. It. Yeah, I've never, you know, because I definitely don't remember ever trying to do this in the bowl because the boys were there. And not because I would be nervous to not... But I'd be so scared because of like just the the bodies around the ring and the ambiance of the arena, you know, and me really wanting to make it feel like it would be televised feel, you know. Oh, yeah, I would yeah, never yeah. attempt to do this in the practice arena. Wow. So this was like in a little warehouse area where they mm -hmm. were just strictly filming the commercial. Okay. So then it was like the little bitty ring, the little bitty room. And I was like, Let's okay. Try it. Yeah, and then that's when I was. 
<laughs> Before moving to the third moment, okay. Another big question that we have is, what's your favorite theme song? Oh, that Nelly Hot in here. I think it was just my preferable one. To like, shake your tail. Yeah, shake your. Yeah, that one. That one was a little easier to get to the ring uh, with. The way I found out that my music changed was like in the before I walked out. <laughs> No. Yeah, it's funny because like Billy Kidman, who was like doing the timekeeper where um, Briscoe used to be. And so like I'm sitting there and we're just probably like shooting the shit, you know, and he's like, all right, you ready for your match? I'm like, yeah, you know what's going on? All of a sudden this disco-y, I don't know even what. Yeah, I was like, what is going on? He's like, go. And I'm like, what is going on? He's like, this is your new music. And I'm like, this Weird. Uh, I don't know. They're just like, pot it! Ah! And they're like, oh, God. It's, a, it's just whatever. <laughs> Everyone knows it's just like that. <laughs> All right, let's move to the third moment. Okay. And it is. You throwing a big tantrum post match. What a wild ride this was. <laughs> They're probably like, what is going on right now? People were so confused. Oh, added to that, there was a rumor going around that this would be your last appearance. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> That's funny. So the rumor was that you did this unscripted. <laughs> Whoa, I didn't know that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, this is so much better well, than in that case. That's really funny. Man, I wish I would have known that rumor. I would have <laughs> ran with it. But and so I was surprised to be like, oh, I kind of look like I knew what I thought I was doing. So I'm like, okay, well, it's obviously because I had support before. So I guess Paige must have been in the ring. And then Vince turned to me and he was like, just go tear up the thingies, you know? And I just did my best to rip up whatever it was. I don't know. This went for weeks. I know. Yeah. It was like kind of funny because it went a while. And I remember on the live events, it was like fun. We would put it in like the comeback where I'd come in and like beat the girls up with like a popcorn bag right, that I got yeah. from the audience, you know? But my character became kind of baby face and kind of heel. So it kind of kept... Mm switching so then the tantrums for me got a little harder especially if i were like to a degree bad and i'm like making the audience members upset they're gonna now go we want our merch you know and then the merch guys are gonna be like well you can't you know put the popcorn in the shoulders and then think they're still gonna drink it you know it's like it just kind of got a little difficult it got kind of clunky the reason why so many people love you so much <laughs> is that you got to show a lot of character in these like moments and segments and there's so many segments to mention but i i had to bring these two moments <laughs> Like how if I like looked at one go, yeah. that is definitely one of my favorite segments. Oh, like, okay. and Naya is one of my favorite opponents. She knows where she is strong, you know, and she knows where she like is refined in detail. The one thing about this live situation is that part where the box flew into her face for a second, I'm like, oh, and then she comes back with that push, right? <laughs> But we were on complete reaction, reaction, you know, there. But my shoes go flying off. And so, yeah, it was like, like, things like that was really funny because it brought Naya and I, like, it really was a moment that we were able to share just with us, mm -hmm. regardless of where your character's going, I'm character's going. And, like, you know, that's actually really funny. I <laughs> like, this is so funny. It's bringing so much joy to my heart, you know? The other moment that people love talking about. <laughs> Are you hungry? <laughs> Are you hungry is my favorite. <laughs> you can see that again. Okay. Oh my god. Hey, hey. <laughs> oh my god, that is so funny to me. Oh my god. <laughs> Go into a little serious mode a little bit. Okay. Yes. Uh, so because you're so memorable as this like wild character on TV, on WWE and Total Divas, the dirt sheets started creating some rumors around, you know, oh, Alicia Fox have a tantrum at a bar, you know, stuff like that. Well, those are probably true. Uh, Which ones? I don't know. <laughs> so from there, people kind of started equating you with that TV oh, character. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Oh, man. So are we getting, like, serious? Yeah, yeah. So we're serious. Right, 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 So the right. ratings just went no. to, like, more, like, PG-13+. plus. <laughs> you know, it's just our social 
like community of this mm -hmm. art, right? Like, yeah. like I didn't know how to play the character out of the ring, you oh. know? And then sometimes my emotions would trip over or like social media TMZs and stuff. And then I kind of had this like internal idea that everyone must have seen my bad, bad behavior, mm -hmm. you know? So it made me right. hold myself pretty much hunched over before mm -hmm. any approach, you know? But that's what was in me. But honestly, like when I look back at these things, like I and my innermost self can see, oh, this is a mental block. This is what a mental block is. Cause mm -hmm. I was able to really bury these segments, bury the memories attached. Like my personal experience of my career, it definitely wasn't televised the same. I'm pretty like this way in life, right? And I can't remember not being this way in catering. I can't remember not being this way sharing a car with women. I am just this way. And I think sometimes the way I was scared a lot of like those writing teams, like there was like a big group of like, I mean, I don't have the best description of what I think the it writing was. Team? Yeah, yeah like, they're in that one room. Like, yeah, there's like 20 of them. <laughs> right. and they're going to write for like an African-American girl. Like, okay, how do you think she, what do you think this person did in high school? What do you think this, a Fox thing did? Because I don't fucking know. Their business was to make sure I understood and could try to memorize these lines mm. on nice printed paper. Right. And my job was to try to memorize these lines on nice piece of paper so I could not get not mic because I don't have good memory skills. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I don't even know if I even care about what they were doing, but it makes a difference because the result was is the audience kept seeing me behave like this. And then of course I'm myself. I'm very colorful. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm like crazy. So you've been clean for four years right almost four years almost in august years. yeah wow. but i always like not to like you know put that in the priority forefront mm -hmm. what it, they say it is just one day at a time you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. let's okay, move yeah. to the fourth moment <laughs> okay. because it's a generational clash <laughs> bailey sasha and alicia fox triple threat rules here tonight look at a reap the Wow. She does. When you became the captain of Survivor Series Raw team, defeating Bailey and Sasha Banks on Raw. <laughs> I love doing those spills out. It yeah. looks like, wow. You're very good at that. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah. It was like, um, I think in this moment in my career, I was aware that there might be a push coming. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, okay, pay attention now. <laughs> And I guess in seeing that match, like, it's funny because, like, you know, Sasha and Bailey really, like, respect their craft and they practice it. And, like, I like to be able to work with those girls, you know, because that was the one thing I think by this time in my career, I had slowly become aware that every generation of woman that comes in is different and they, like, keep fluid, you know, so... A lot of when my, I think the study of my craft started expanding now that I can reflect with you on it. Oh. You know, Beth was there, right. Melina was there when I first got on the road, McCool, mm -hmm. Layla, and we all had very like our developmental style, yeah. like, you know, segments. Like we could go to a live event and be like, okay, Layla over Fox. And then we'd be like, all right, we'll see you after makeup or something. And then I guess there would be like a super diva, like hyper diva diva divas where we were doing like, prom dress matches mm -hmm. with like the twins and then I mean I like this because you get to dress up so <laughs> I never had an issue with those I like, I like whatever the story of the match is still the same because then at that point it was a good bleed of like the bets and everything right, right, with right, the right. diva girls mm -hmm. and so there was a lot of skill ch sharing mm -hmm. like lots of skill sharing so it was like likes of Sasha and Bailey coming up kind of expanded your yeah because they came from like a very like they were very like wanted to be technician wrestlers right 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 right, right, right. And this is where it gets funny, where, like, this is what was more reality TV. It's like, well, they want to be technical wrestlers. That's fine. But can you put asses in seats? Like, does anyone want to come see y'all, like, do thousand jelly roll rolls? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because at that same time, you know, we shared a locker room with, like, the Bella Twins, Maurice. Right. All of us knew how to work mm -hmm. from the girls before us, the Beth, the right. Mickey's. So we were, like, with these kitties that are, like, we're technical, you know, and they're all NXT. <laughs> <laughs> just like, do y'all remember Derby Park OVW? We set those rings up. Mm, oh, that's wow. what I'm saying. Me, Marie, set the rings up. Mickey, all these girls, 
all these girls that open the doors for Sasha, for right. Bailey, and no offense, <laughs> some of them sassies. Speaking of the push and the Beth Phoenix, yeah, I don't love entertaining the dirt sheet, but mm. everyone was asking. So when you were having this Divas of Doom storyline, you had this huge victory over Beth Phoenix on Raw. And that's also the match that Beth got injured. Oh, uh, was it the eye socket or thing? Eye socket maybe? Yeah, where I was playing this. Mo- it was like a flipping thing right. in my heel. Yeah. And the rumor at that time was that Alicia Fox was supposed to have this huge push, but then that was stopped as a punishment. I don't. Yeah, I remember hearing that rumor, so okay. I can agree with that. I don't know if that was what stopped my career. I and her have never even talked about like any, so I never knew any of that stuff. Yeah, I don't know. You know, uh, you were in a lot of different teams throughout your career. Yeah. Foxana, Team Bellas, with Rosa and Tamina. What's what's the one that- Oh my God. (laughs) What's the one that sticks out to you the most? Well, I guess Rosa and Tamina, because I'm like, when was that? But yeah. um. Yeah, the ones I had the most fun with, I guys. Wait, roll it next, please. Again, it was like, wait, it was. She's got Team Bellas. Team Bella. Foxana, which was really fun. Foxana, yeah. The popcorn, you put popcorn in her mouth. Oh my god, I just remember unfortunately having a match after we were tag teams right, together, right. and like, mm, my friend. And you had a cute thing with Eve Torres and Kelly Kelly. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. that was actually okay. Looking at it, I think that was probably my most fun because that was like. Uh, definitely a younger mm. situation and the three of us were like what's going on <laughs> and it was just like like I think like reflecting back on it that was probably my most fun mm. absolutely because like we just were having so much fun like we just having so much fun well let's have some fun actually okay. so throughout the career you had so many iconic hairstyles <laughs> oh my god <laughs> So These are some of the few. Oh my god. I did a vote on what's their favorite hairstyle of yours, and I got like thousands of votes that I had to tally. Like, it took me some time. You're gonna have to sing in this picture because I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like nine. So let's start with what's your favorite, and then we're gonna guess what the fans' favorite is. Oh my god, okay. I think I would go with number eight right now. Oh, okay, okay. But the short blonde. Yeah, just a short. What do you think is a fan favorite? Well, I would say number Eight. Okay, let's see. <laughs> let's see if you're right. First of all, Chelsea Green responded. Her favorite is 279. Oh my God. 279, so not eight. <laughs> oh my God, Chelsea Green. She's so sweet. The fan favorite was oh, the Fiery is- Red. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that is so funny. <laughs> the second one was this this longer brunette hair. Was, yeah. Third place is Divas Championship hair. You're so sweet. Thank you so much. That is so funny. This is a research for this the Vicks Crow like era, baby. Research. <laughs> I love research. <laughs> I do. I have an econ major, so this is, you know, I love Perfect. I yeah. love charts and all this stuff. <laughs> I love business. <laughs> Let's move to the last moment. Okay. It is... True pioneers of the women's evolution, Alicia Fox and Mickey James. You and Mickey James versus Trish Stratus Alita at Evolution. All veterans, all legends match. Wow. Woo! Yeah. Go no girls. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Like, yeah, yeah. Trish, go Alita. <laughs> What's your memory of this match? Oh, I felt in my heart, like in all... Honestly, I was like, I hope this is like the one to put my hat on, like just to be done with it. Cause I mean, it just was the time. Like I just, it was weird. Cause like, I, I didn't sense that like in the beginning of the day, like I'm saying like in the beginning and walking to the arena that day, preparing for the match, I didn't feel that until it was right before our match. And I think one of the dot-com guys asked me and he was like, are you excited about evolution? Are you excited about, I was like, yeah, I was like, you know, I'm in there and I'm with Trish and I'm being reflective and then I started getting emotional. Well, I was very emotional because I was just, just really wanted to just get home, you know what mm. I'm saying? But more importantly, I was a purely in a complete accepting moment as I surprisingly was coming to and I'm like, yeah, this is the top of the cake for me. Mm. I just remember feeling like that, that in that moment being like, this might be my last match and I'm okay with it. <laughs> like, cause it was like, Alexa was her, I was in there with Trish, I was in there with Lita, and I was there with Mickey. It was just like, it was like, where? there's not gonna be another storyline. I'm tired, guys, I'm going home. <laughs> I was like. Let's, let's talk about, let's talk about that. There's a lot of confusions about the, the retirement 
quotation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because after showing up in that Legends night as legend, mm -hmm. you weren't shown actively anymore on WWE TV. And then you, you did do Rumble appearances. And recently you talked about on Instagram how you're not retired, you unretired. You talked about even how you were, until recently you were with WWE. For me, during the pandemic, I were at home and I'm like, don't really know why I'm at home. <laughs> I mean, you know, and like, but my luggage is packed. Mm -hmm. Ready to go. Ready to go. Okay. I mean, I'm healthy enough. I'm in shape enough. I can jump rope a long time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I'm just kidding. Whatever going on at work, if my bag's packed, not packed, whatever. Like, I knew that there was a date in April coming that, like, my contract comes to an end. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, it's like April... It was like April 25th okay. or something this this year. And it was kind of like this waiting pattern that I was used to already having. Like, oh, they'll call me when they need me. They'll call me when they need me, whatever, whatever. Because I broke my tailbone, right? Mm -hmm. It was rumble like Michelle hadn't been in the ring in seven years. And I think me, her fit, felt comfortable with whatever we would do. Because that's just what you do. But then I broke my tailbone. So then I went home. So then that's what happened. Oh. And at this point, I broke my tailbone. I think I was going on the road here and there, like Toronto and doing appearances and stuff and still trying to get sober, but just not being able to figure it out because I was so just broken hearted by this shit. And I remember one outcry I had was in Toronto and they, like I was supposed to work a program, but then I got taken off, like at the day or something. It was just a lot, like it was a lot. After I went to rehab, um, I think the pandemic happened a couple weeks after, you know, it was super strange. Cause like at the time, like I was really grateful that I wasn't in the facility during this pandemic. I don't know, like I'm freaking out. I am an alcoholic and y'all have me at home. I've been there in that machine 17 years. I want an explanation. I want to know about this date coming up. And now this is while I'm sober, this still haunting day and no answers. Mm. And then one day a fan tweeted me a picture of that legend shirt. And I had a little head on there mm. from this match. Oh, yeah. Okay. That picture. Okay. I was like, why is my head on that shirt? You're going to legend me up? Like, it's not even fair. I got to go on a phone call. And they're like, are you retired? I'm like, I got my first merch. <laughs> so I'm like, sure. <laughs> sure. Okay, whatever. We'll go to the firing date. <laughs> yeah, you know, and yeah. this whole time I'm nervous I'm going to get fired, right? Right. The release date. Yeah. Yeah. So you, until that day, you just had no communication with. No, okay, wow. Wow. Yeah, this that's what That's so shocking. It's sad. Like, and I, like, can't go on my own social media and say what? I thought maybe my release date, they would give me a statement of support, say, well, she gone. No. No mention. No nothing. I don't know. I just felt bad, you know? Yeah. I felt sad yeah. for every miscommunication or something. Or lack of communication, because yeah, you've like, given your youth, your 17 years of life, um, for this, but but where are you with outside of this machine? Where are you with the art of wrestling? That's a really, really nice embracing question that I'm really, um, I'm really happy to like, I don't know, question with you. <laughs> I haven't changed. Nothing's changed. My life hasn't changed. Myself hasn't changed. My perspective hasn't changed. Or, oh yeah, it has changed. I just like, for some reason in my imagination have accepted I am not under contract. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So you're just like, I'm like, okay, I'm not there. <laughs> just, I'm like, they've been ghosting me the whole time. Right. So it's like, well, I don't know if they want me to go, okay, and then okay, oh, <laughs> what? Okay, thanks. <laughs> I'm kind of open okay. to the industry because I know it's not one business narrow. I guess I get surprised when I hear my passion for the sport come out because I'm surprised to hear myself um, be able to talk about it. Yeah, because I almost don't want to cry about it these days, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about Vix Crow. What does this mean? Who is Vix Crow? Okay. And what does this mean for us? Okay, <laughs> so because of that whole experience, you know, I had to kind of bookshelf my transition out of WWE or wrestling or I don't know what it was. I didn't know if I saw myself as a wrestler or in the industry, even anywhere near it. Realistically, like Vix Crow for me, it's just kind of like the first like, 
risk I can provide myself. Like, you know, like it, it doesn't really have much form. Uh, it doesn't sound like a prom dress, okay? <laughs> <laughs> like, but it's clunky. But the thing is, is like, you know, it kind of reminds me of like, you know, the tail end of a dress or like the drapery or like this just long extra fabric. Like if I can just like roll out enough space for me to just like learn in like then i don't care what happens are you training to wrestle by the way um so i don't know if i'm training like okay. i'm walking my street in my jump rope every now and then but like you know i um i will be going to like booker t mm. booker t's school in houston like um july 15th okay i really like how gritty their students are mm. Um, and so I know that there's going to be a time of like getting in there and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. Yes. Vix Crow. Yes. In the ring, maybe. I mean, Absolutely. it's definitely coming. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know when. I mean, I'm like, you're not going to say like today, tomorrow, next year or nothing. Like wrestling's so large, everyone can be what they want. Mm -hmm. But I don't see Vix Crow, Victoria, myself, this person running towards like a championship run to be mm. recognized for something like i just want to be able to just run a long time throughout my life i'm not trying to be everyone's poster girl like in mm. the business so you're doing this for yourself not yes, to like, not for accomplishments championship uh, or stuff like that and i and then the thing is that i have to preface is like i've only known one machine right that's the problem like all the independence i kind of like Mm -hmm. But I've been in one that, and it seems like the priority is to be champion. WWE didn't provide the idea to me that champion is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. That was not true because I was doing other things and other business things right. and stuff. And I liked doing all the corporate stuff and learning how the business grew and all these things. But it seemed that when my opponent started cherishing that idea, my matches changed. Mm -hmm. It was hard to like work with people who care about championship goal like it's just not fun so whatever that looks like forward that's what i want to be a part of that's really interesting yeah yeah it just isn't fun when you're like i need to do this match like right. this and i'm like ah like just to darn it yeah <laughs> it's interesting because a lot of wrestlers like their like goal is to either win championship or make moments you know but like you're just finding yourself and you're just doing what makes you happy, right? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's surprising that it's actually could possibly be in a match or could possibly be in different wrestling. But that is what's so weird is because like when I opened that door, I was like, wait, I haven't really left this place yet. And I'm like, <laughs> and then I was thinking the big boot. And you're like, oh! Well, I'm excited for you Thank for you, this yes. new chapter. I got to tell you, Alicia Fox you're fans, so Foxy fans are the most loyal of them all. You're no, I'm not. I'm dead serious. They are the most You're loyal. So sweet. So, what do you want to tell the fans? Man, I guess I can, you know, um, in my heart, in all honesty, I want to like give like a real like apology or, I mean, for that time lapse. Yeah, I'm just really just excited for them to get to know me. Yeah. You know what I'm for saying? Real you. Yeah, like that's what I'm, I just really hope that you guys would like. To get to know me, like seeing someone in a disease is very scary. Yeah. You know, especially a drinking disease, you know. So I think it's not so much as that I'm trying to apologize for that time space or all the things. But what I'm trying to say is like I just hope that everyone can get to know me better to add to the context. Cause I it's not my style to go and try to minimize things that someone perceived for themselves. You know what I'm saying? Like, again, like, cause in my mind, like, I feel comfortable enough to bring you guys up to date when it, right now, you know? So I guess it's like, you know, a symbol of just saying, you know, in, in high faith that hopefully we can get to know each other better. Cause it, it was just different performing under a different persona, you know? And that, I guess, is tricky for anyone. Yeah. <laughs> So get ready, we're going for a ride. <laughs>